In his book, Loving God, Chuck Holson does as well as anyone I've ever read on describing this. The disciples' realization that Christ is who he says he is compelled them to obedience. Understanding this is crucial for it distinguishes Christianity from all other religions. The Christian faith rests not merely on great teaching or philosophies or the charisma of a leader or upon the success in raising moral values nor upon the skill or eloquence or good works of its advocates. If it did, it would have no more claim to authority than the sayings of Confucius or Mao or Buddha or Muhammad or any of a thousand cults. Christianity rests on historical truth. Jesus lived, died, rose from the dead to be our Lord. With that understood, Christianity must evoke from the believer, don't miss this, the same response it drew from the first disciples, a passionate desire to obey and please God, a willingly entered into discipline that is the beginning of true discipleship. That is a mouthful. So I come up with these three very simple applications. Following Christ means more than believing in him. It includes obeying him. Question, is there an area of your life that is in disobedience to him? If there is, nothing is more important today than for you to deal with that area of disobedience. I urge you, I even warn you. Don't learn to go on shrugging off areas of disobedience. Following Christ means more than believing in him, it includes obeying him. Second, obeying him means more than accepting truth. It means tasting death. At times, saying no to something is like a death. The death of a dream. The death of a romance. The death of a hope. The death of your plan. Number three, tasting death means more than an occasional act of unselfishness. It means dying to something every day. 